Hi guys, welcome back to another video on RabbitMQ. In this video, we'll look at some more options available to us when using exchanges and queues in RabbitMQ. We'll start off by looking at the concept of using an alternate exchange and also the concept of using dead letter exchanges and what the difference between these two is. Then we'll look at a concept we've touched on previously, which is the exception and rejection of messages in our consumers, but we'll touch on that in a little bit more detail. Then we'll wrap up the video by looking at some additional options that we have to us when creating a queue that we haven't looked at previously. As usual, this video will be followed by two videos that cover the implementation of these concepts in C Sharp and Python. So this video will cover the explanation, while the following videos will cover the implementation. So we'll start off by looking at the use of an alternate exchange. As we've seen in many examples previously, the flow in RabbitMQ is usually that a producer will publish a message to an exchange. That exchange will then push that message onto one or more queues, depending on the bindings it has. And then finally, the consumer service will pull those messages off the queue and consume them. Alternate exchanges are an extension to the AMQP model created by RabbitMQ to handle unrootable messages. It involves specifying an already existing exchange that the new exchange will route messages to if they are not currently routable. So in this example, we have two exchanges. We have the alternate exchange and the main exchange. When we're creating the main exchange, we can point it at the alternate exchange and tell RabbitMQ that this is the alternate exchange for the main exchange. So for example, if the binding we've added to the main exchange and the consumer queue is bound using, say, the binding key test, if we publish a message from the producer to the main exchange with the key sample, the main exchange will not be able to route this message to any queues it knows about. So the message will be said to be unrootable. In this case, because we've set the main exchange up with an alternate exchange, this message will be routed to the alternate exchange. And an alternate exchange is the same as any other exchange in RabbitMQ. It can be any exchange type. For example, it can be a topic, a direct, or a fanout exchange. The most common type for an alternate exchange is a fanout exchange. And we can do whatever we want with this exchange. So we can bind it to multiple different queues. A common example we might see of the use of the alternate exchange is as a fanout exchange that routes all unreadable messages to a queue that's connected to some sort of perhaps logging or alerting service. The concept of a dead letter exchange is quite similar to that of an alternate exchange. A dead letter exchange is an extension to the AMQ specification and like the alternate exchange, is just a normal exchange. When we declare a queue, we can declare that that queue has an associated dead letter exchange with it. Any message that is routed to that queue, but cannot be delivered to a consumer or expires for some reason, can be then sent to the dead letter exchange. Once the message has been routed to the dead letter exchange, again, we can do whatever we want with it. A common example, again, might be to hook this dead letter exchange to a logging or alerting a service to make our developers aware that messages are being rejected from a queue or not being delivered to consumers. The main difference to remember between the use of an alternate exchange and a dead letter exchange is that expired or rejected messages are delivered to a dead letter exchange while unrootable messages are delivered to an alternate exchange. As we've seen in many of our examples so far, we often consume messages from a consumer with auto acknowledge enabled. This means that as soon as the consumer reads the message off the queue, it acknowledges to the broker that it has successfully read the message. The broker can then remove that message from the queue. So even if the consumer doesn't successfully process it, the broker will still think that the message has been successfully processed. In many simple cases, this is sufficient functionality. But in more complicated cases, we might want to remove the auto act functionality from our consumer and explicitly implement it ourselves. To do this, when we are finished consuming a message, we need to send an acknowledgement to the broker that we have finished consuming the message. And we can do this by using basic act. Basic act accepts a parameter called delivery tag. The delivery tag is an auto incrementing number for that particular consumer that indicates what message it has now received. So the first message a consumer receives will have the delivery tag of zero, the second, one, third, two, and so on. The delivery tag can be used when using the basic acknowledgement method frame to tell RabbitMQ what message we are acknowledging. Delivery tags are scoped per consumer. 
So when we're sending a basic acknowledge, it needs to be sent on the same channel that the message was received. As an alternative to basic ACK, we also have the basic reject method frame. This is very similar to basic ACK, except instead of telling RabbitMQ that we've successfully processed the message, it's telling RabbitMQ that we haven't successfully processed the message or we cannot process it. Basic rejects shouldn't be used as a routing mechanism in our system. Again, they take a delivery tag to tell RabbitMQ which message we are rejecting, and they also have an option to requeue the message. This is a Boolean option which tells RabbitMQ that we've rejected this message, but we want it to be requeued onto the queue that it came from. If we only have one consumer of that queue, this can lead to a loop where a message is rejected and requeued multiple times. If there are multiple consumers, RabbitMQ will make an effort to deliver it to a different consumer. Basic ACK also takes a Boolean flag, which is called multiple. This allows us to acknowledge multiple messages at once. Say for instance, we receive five messages on our consumer. So with delivery tags, zero through four. If we haven't acknowledged any of those messages, but then acknowledge the fourth delivery tag with the multiple flag set to true, this means that we've acknowledged all messages up to and including four. So this is a way to acknowledge multiple messages at once. The basic reject method frame does not give us the option to set multiple and thus can only be used to reject a single message at a time. However, there is an alternative to basic reject called basic NAC. Like basic ACK and basic reject, it takes a delivery tag, but it has both the options for requeue and multiple, which work the same way as described for the basic ACK and basic reject method frames. This allows us to reject multiple messages at once, the same way we can acknowledge multiple messages at once. Finally, let's touch on some options we have for controlling queues in RabbitMQ. There are many different options and we'll discuss some of the main and most important ones here. And the first one we'll discuss is the auto delete option. So this allows us to delete a queue automatically if it's no longer needed. A queue is only deleted when there are no consumers consuming from it. This is also known as a temporary queue and is often used in applications such as chat applications or applications that use a request reply platter where we create queues for a time but they are no longer needed. Similarly to auto delete, we also have queues that auto expire. Like auto delete, this option will delete a queue but only after a certain amount of time has elapsed where the queue is not used. To do this, we declare the queue with the X expires argument. We also give the queue a TTL or a time to live, which tells RabbitMQ broker how long we want the queue to stay around after it's no longer being used. The queue will then expire after certain conditions have passed, including the queue having no more consumers. Auto delete is usually set with a flag, while auto expire is usually set with the X expires argument. Speaking of expiry, as well as auto expiring the queue, we also have the ability to auto expire messages. This prevents messages from hanging around too long on a queue if they haven't been consumed. If we have a dead letter exchange set up and a message on a queue expires, it will be sent to the dead letter exchange. When we're setting up a queue, in order to enable auto expire messages, we send the argument X message TTL along with the TTL of how long we want the message to survive on the queue for. We also have the ability to keep a limited number of messages on a queue at any one time. This allows us to create queues that have a known max length. If more messages are published to the queue than the max length configured when creating the queue, then we'll drop messages from the front of the queue as more messages are added. These removed messages can be dead lettered. To enable this, we send the argument x max length when creating the queue, which configures the maximum message count for a queue. We can also create what's known as an exclusive queue. We've seen this before in some of our code examples, but an exclusive queue only allows one consumer at a time. It can only be consumed on the same connection and channel that it was declared on, and is set usually by a flag when creating the queue. Another option we've talked about before is queue durability and creating a durable queue. Again, a queue's durability is set as a flag when creating the queue, and a durable queue is a queue that will persist across server restarts. So if our message broker restarts and comes back up again, the queue will still exist. This is an important flag and consideration to take into account when trying to make our RabbitMQ deployment as reliable as possible. There are other arguments we can send when creating a queue, such as arguments to set up which is the dead letter exchange we want to use using the X dead letter exchange argument. There are also other arguments that relate to highly available queues. So queues that span more than one node but we will not touch on these in this video. 
So thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more RabbitMQ content.